Hello, thank you for joining us. Well, it's Wednesday edition of Business Nigeria. I am Tulu Lokpe Ogunjobi. Yesterday was all about Moshud Kashima Wolawale Abiola looking at his business empire and things surrounding it. But back to normal business. Today, we'll start with a story that says the Central Bank of Nigeria has injected $210 million to meet customers' requests in various segments of the foreign exchange market. The Apex Bank, in line with its effort to meet customers' needs, offered $100 million to authorize dealers in the wholesale segment of the market, while small and medium enterprises uh, segment received the sum of $55 million. Reports from the bank says... Customers seeking foreign exchange for invisibles, such as tuition fees, medical payments, a basic travel allowance, and others were allocated $55 million. Meanwhile, the acting director, Corporate Communications Department, Isaac Okora, foresays the CBN will sustain its strategic management of Forex to reduce the country's import bills and stop depletion of its foreign reserves. The African Development Bank says it will invest $120 million in the next three years to boost productivity and transform cassava and other commodities on the continent. This investment comes at a time when government, African governments are scaling up efforts to end food imports and create wealth. The commodities are cassava, rice, maize, sorghum, millet, wheat, livestock aquaculture, high iron beans and orange fleshed sweet potatoes. Director for Agriculture, Martins Fregene, uh, who disclosed this at International Conference on Cassava, says cassava transformation will help African nations to redirect more than $1.2 billion into its continent's uh, domestic economies. In line with its commitment towards reducing the tax burden and improving the ease of doing business for taxpayers, while well, the Federal Executive Council has approved two executive orders and five amendment bills, this was made known by the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshu, at the council meeting. Adeoshu says the approval followed recommendations of the National Tax Policy Implementation Committee set up in April 2017 to review tax laws and regulation in line with the revised National Tax Policy. The two approved executive orders are the Value Added, uh, Value -added Tax Act modification order reviewed to goods, liable and excise duties and applicable rates order 2017, while the five amendment bills include the Companies Income Tax Act Bill and Value Added Tax Act, uh, Act Customs uh, Excise Tariff, Personal Income Tax and Industrial Development. She added that the new tax policies will remove ambiguous and contradictory provisions in the law, increasing uh, government's revenue and simplifying the process of paying taxes and doing business. Meanwhile, the modifications in the two executive orders will take effect as communicated in the orders while the bills will be enforced until uh, the, they have been reviewed and enacted by the National Assembly. By virtue of the provisions of the Value Added Tax Act modification order, residential property leases or rentals, transport services for use by general public and life insurance premiums are now exempted from value added tax. The review of goods liable to excise duties and applicable rates uh, order provides legislative backing to approved changes uh, to the rates and basis for levying excise duties on alcoholic beverages, tobacco, amongst others. Well, to put all of this into perspective, I have with me in the studio the president of the International Center for Tax Research and Development, the person of uh, Mrs. Morenike Babintin Ashayi. Thank you very much for joining us on the show, ma. Thank you, Tolu. I, I want to start with um, this executive orders and bills. Um, what do you think, or do you think this is the right time for governments to, you know, talking about this review at this time? Well, I think uh, for me, the, the bills, the tax bills that are being proposed should have been proposed before the 2018 budget. Mm. It is good that government is thinking, but they should not have thought aloud because it's going to affect a lot. It's going to affect businesses, you know, like some organizations can now wait, mm. can decide when to declare their income, when to transact certain business. So. If, we, if, if the government is looking at these uh, tax uh, bills to take effect in 2018, it's going to affect the 2018 budget. Then they will have to explain to the 
legislature. How are they going to manage? Because the Appropriation Act is on, it has been signed. And then if we now bring in all this reduction in taxes, which of course many state revenue agencies and even the Federal Land Revenue Service have used in their own budget statement for revenue uh, generation. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the problem, we're going to have a problem as to, assuming there's a shortfall, how do we intend to finance that shortfall? Are we going to take loan to finance the shortfall? So that's, uh, I, you see, what is, what is important is that all these kind of uh, tax bills should have actually been carried out before presenting to the National Assembly. It should have been the basis. After National Assembly has approved, you know, the intentions of government, they will now have the confidence to use it in doing their budget estimate. But we cannot afford a situation now that we are going to borrow again to meet up any for, uh, shortfall. VAT may come, it may not come. It depends on transactions. But you would have given companies the reduction. You, ha you would have given individuals uh, the reduction. So it, it, I will advise the government that in future, let us face tax bills first. Mm -hmm. In England, they call it finance bills. That is how you intend to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. That is what the, the government should present to the legislature first. The public will debate it. The National Assembly will approve it. And then they can now use it for basis of budgeting. Now let's look at taxpayers now being worried or being concerned about restructuring. I'm looking at all of this restructuring taxpayers. Where does all of this come in? Well, you know, a, a, a taxpayer, any taxpayer in the world needs security needs social welfare, needs, you know, trust, needs to have trust in the government. So you find a situation that every taxpayer wants a situation that when I'm contributing to the operation of government, because we are, we are subsidizing government, there can't be any government without taxpayers' money, you know, because when you look at even natural resources, it will not come as taxpayers' money will come. Taxpayers' money is ready now. But natural resources that we even uh, rely on may take 15, 10, 20 years to come. So the taxpayer is fundamental to any growth of any government. Mm -hmm. And as such, the taxpayers want a situation that he, he or she is a partner in progress. Yes. If you look at, at our constitution, there are three cogent areas that government must perform, and we call it fundamental objectives of state principles. In the area of politic, uh, the politics, the area of social order, the area of uh, um, economic order. These are areas that are important to any taxpayer, and that is why taxpayers are interested in restructuring. You know, well, you, you, you cannot, you, you can't force unity. You know, unity must be something we all consent to. And the present constitution that we have does not even foster unity. It is purely a military founded constitution. And when we are lying against the people, when we say we, the people of Nigeria, we know it is not we, the people of Nigeria. Some people, you know. <laughs> but when we, we, you find that a lot of people have actually been agitating for restructuring. It, it, the, those agitations are not baseless. They are important because that is the only thing that can give us comfort. So I, will, I know that the president, uh, President uh, Mohamed Dubuhari, has no constitutional power to change the constitution. And people should not blame him for not doing that. We, the people, should actually face how we can help him do his job. Mm. I believe that if those elders that have been crying aloud that there is need for restructuring, let them sit down, you know, from state to state. Let them bring their own, uh, you know, their own ideas. Then take it to National Assembly. At least we hired them. We voted for them. Take it to National Assembly. This is what we are thinking in these various states. Then the National Assembly can now take this and 
try as much as possible to modify where it is necessary. Then if you, if you present to the president, the president has no choice because this is people's will. But we keep talking about President Buhari, President Buhari, if he does not have the, 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 the uh, constitutional power to do something, mm. must he force mm. himself to do it? Mm. But what we're structuring really is the constitutional matter. Uh, you, you, do you agree? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, yes. yes. What, what are the key issues that will really affect a taxpayer uh, when it comes to our constitution? The first is political order. Mm. We want to know how government is run. At the moment you find that if you look at the section of the constitution that deal with political order, it was as if we are not serious. We want a situation, for example, I have suggested that we should have six zonal presidents. There is too much pressure on the central government and it's not worth it. It's not, it's not necessary. The, the central government is taking too much body and everybody, everybody is blaming the president, blaming the president, you know, not knowing that even the, 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 uh, the instrument that he has to use, you know, is not enough for him to be able to do otherwise. Mm. If we have six zonal presidents, they will be in charge of the zones. They will now be assisting the central, uh, the central president mm. to ensure that work is done. I, for one, President Buhari says something which I agree with, that ministers, although he is supposed to have 36 representatives of the state, there is nothing in the constitution that says he should make them ministers. I would have preferred a situation where these ministers are actually in their states working for the federal government, seeing how the federal government implementations of their ideals and so on can affect their states. We have permanent secretaries in the ministries. They can work. They can work without the ministers. And we have seen even the, when uh, President Buhari assumed duty, you saw that we have we intelligent, knowledgeable, you know, capable permanent secretaries. So the ministers should stay in their state, you know, connecting, uh, connecting the central with the state making sure, I mean, if you are representative in your state, you want to make sure that whatever the federal government wants done in your state is done. And that is the only way we can say, yes, this minister has represented us well. Mm. 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 Interesting. Well, well let, let, let's take this break, Anna I will still be having um, Mrs. Moreni Kebabinta Shai here to talk more about the issues surrounding Nigeria's tax system. Stay with us. It's your show business, Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. Well, we're still looking at tax policies, constitutional matter, restructuring, taxpayers' perspective, and the right person is here in the house, president of the uh, International Center for Tax Research and Development. This is Moreni Kebabintin Ashai. Now, you, you, you talked about political order. Please, let's round up on that before I go to my next question. Yeah, so the issue of political order is, is, a, is an area that we need to look into urgently. The constitution we have does not even you know, tell them, how long can we practice this constitution before we make a change? That is a, that is a fault on the part of okay. the constitution. Okay. If we desire a new constitution, what steps should we take? The constitution did not say that. So that is important. Right. We also Economic. want a situation under political order that government does not spend too much money, 70% or 80% on administration. That is what is affecting taxpayers because the money the government is supposed to uh, plow back to health service, to education, to infrastructure, government will not be able to do that. More importantly, government is not supposed to put all money together and you share. There are, you know, money that is meant for uh, governance should be kept separately. Money that is meant for the social welfare, mm -hmm. economic, and so on should be kept separately. With regards to the issue of economic order in our constitution, it is clear, and we are not practicing it. That is why I'm saying that taxpayers should be watchful for the 2019, economy, uh, 2019 election. We don't, want, uh, we don't want parties to come and be telling us about their manifestos. We want parties, political, uh, we want politicians to come and tell us how they will implement the constitution 
what has been put in the constitution. Don't come and tell us about your manifesto. We have a constitution that says you must do this politically, you must do this economically, you must do this socially. Tell us how you want to implement it. Because when they come with their private manifesto, they concentrate on that and then they leave others. When you look at economic order, it is there in the constitution that there must be no monopoly of economic activities. And that is what we are witnessing in Nigeria today. You know, so that is affecting, yeah. yeah, it's affecting the result to taxpayers. When you talk about oil wells, how many people have the oil wells? Recently, I was listening to um, a discussion on the television where a group from Niger Delta said that they saw foreign ships, you know, coming to take oil from Nigeria. And NNPC is not aware. The, those who are supposed to be guiding the place, they are not aware. So these are economic activities that we want government to tell us how they want to do. We don't want po a political party manifesto anymore. Mm. And when you look at social welfare, we are talking about education. We are talking about uh, health. We are talking about uh, environment. We are talking about our attitude or our uh, affairs with foreign, foreign, uh, com uh, foreign uh, countries. So these are all under... Uh, social welfare. How do you want to do it? Unfortunately for us, the constitution is saying education can be free whenever government can afford it. In some claims, they will specifically say that education to this point is free. So whether you are in public, sec uh, public school or you are in private school, you are entitled to your grant. You are entitled to your education voucher. That is what we want government to do. Because as of now, government is not meeting up its educational responsibility. A lot of taxpayers, a lot of parents are the one paying, you know, and government is not compensating them adequately. Mm -hmm. These are issues for taxpayers. Real issues. Now, 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 if there's an amendment, can that really resolve these issues? They seem to be interwoven, kind of. Can an amendment address this challenge? I wish it could. But the problem that we are having at the moment, you, you have seen from every zone in Nigeria, that they are not happy with the political order. Even election is an area of concern to taxpayers because a lot of money is spent on, on elections. Yes. But we don't derive the benefits we are supposed to derive from that result of the election. Yes. One of the politicians came out recently to say, this is how we manage elections. So we, they wasted our time. They have already voted before even we went to the polls. So these are issues. You can't be spending billions of naira that could have been used to resolve poverty, that could have been used for education in election that is not going to give taxpayers any, any, uh, any comfort. We'll get our leaders so, from there too. I beg to disagree. I beg to disagree, Tolu. I don't call people, I don't call people leaders mm. until they, sh they show that they show proof of leadership. Mm. The fact that you are a governor today doesn't mean that you are a leader. Until you are able to do, uh, you, you are able to have good conscience towards mm. your people. Mm. Until you, are, you, cannot be, you cannot be riding a car that costs 255 million <laughs> when your people are riding in a keke marwa. <laughs> that is not a leader. A leader Indeed. would rather ride in Kekemarua and allow his people to ride in that uh, 255 million uh, uh, jeep. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now what are the suggestions on how a new constitution can be made possible? Because our tax system, uh, a lot needs to be done. Even our tax to GDP rates, so low. It will, it will be low. It will be low because you find that corruption is everywhere. When you are blaming government for corruption, corruption is not only with government. Corruption is in the private sector. Corruption is everywhere in the land. So for us to improve, and if I believe that if we really want the growth, we want development, we want unity in this country, we should concentrate on a new constitution. And our elders in the state, should, should, should stop talking. They should act. Let them sit down, bring their own ideas, and go to the National Assembly 
and address the people we voted in to protect our interest. If we can do that, and we have a new constitution that we can say, we, the people of Nigeria, everything will go well. And it's important that everything we do, the welfare of the people is paramount. Of Most the taxpayer. Be of the taxpayer. Hmm. Because we are the one contributing towards the, 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 the government. We are the one putting the money down. And we don't want a situation that we put money down and use that on yourself, you know? He, for example, you see a legislator that the, the wardrobe allowance is even more than the minimum wage for, uh, for, uh, for a taxpayer or a citizen. And then you cannot, as a legislator, say, no, this is wrong. My people cannot collect minimum wage. You find a situation where we have governors that are receiving, uh, what, what do they call it? Votes and all of that. A constituency vote yes. that they don't need to explain to anybody. And you, have, you go to their, their streets, people are poor. So these are issues. We need to sit down. Our elders all over the place should take it upon themselves. They should not blame the president. The president has no constitutional right to change anything. We are the people. And the constitution is going to say, we the people of Nigeria. So elders from each state should map out their strategy, go to the National Assembly, make their presentation, and then we can move forward from there. I believe that if we do this, Nigeria will be a better place for everybody because we are going to, uh, we are going to you know, when you have a constitution, there must always be uh, a, a, a working plan. Yeah. Because now what we do is to hire people or we vote people in and we rely on their conscience. What if their conscience is not good? Then we are doomed. Mm, mm, mm. But if we have a situation that we have something in the constitution and there is a sort of a, a notebook, this is what you must do, this is what you can do, this is what you cannot do, then that person will be able to walk according to the Bible. Well, a lot needs to be done. Well, I know, I know we can go on. The passion is there when it comes to issues of tax. President, International Center for Tax Research and Development, Mrs. Moreni K. Babintin Ashai there, giving views on the present constitution as regards to taxpayers and how we can, our government can actually manage what comes in and how Nigerians can reap the fruit of labor, well, as in dividends of democracy, too. <laughs> well, that, that, that's another big issue. That's another big one. The, democracy is another thing entirely. How right, to then. practice this is something that we need to be sincere about. <laughs> because what we are practicing at the moment is we are having the, the uh, dictatorship under the masquerade of democracy, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, that will be a topic for another yes, day, man. Yes. Thank you very much uh, for coming on Business Nigeria. It's always a pleasure having you on the show.